Welcome to the Simplify Your Life podcast. It's Coach Simona and I'm glad you decided to tune in. Hey everyone, in today's podcast episode, we're going to talk about how to put yourself first and not feel guilty. And I will share with you three in-depth tips on how to choose yourself. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Simona, Certified Life Coach and author of the book 111 Ways to Simplify Your Life. I make weekly podcast episodes on personal development, so if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to subscribe. Now, before we get into my three tips on how to put yourself first without feeling guilty, I want to share with you my own struggles when it comes to taking care of myself. I used to be a huge people pleaser. I wanted everyone around me to be happy, I wanted to keep the peace, and I prided myself on being a fixer. The tricky thing was that, as a fixer, I spent almost all of my time focusing on other people's lives, and not enough time focusing on my own. You see, when you put other people's needs before your own, you're disregarding your own truth. You live in life on their terms. Your entire identity is wrapped around the way other people perceive you, not the way you would actually want to live your life. So here comes the question. Why do we feel guilty every time we put ourselves first? And how can we stop putting other people's emotional needs before our own? The answer is shockingly simple. Because that's how we've been taught. From a very young age, most kids hear the words, Don't be selfish. Sharing is caring. How dare you do this to me? You're such a bad child. For example, when we're children, it comes naturally to us to take the last piece of the cake at a birthday party or not feel guilty for picking the best toy for ourselves, not our cousins. But society tells you that you should be a good girl or a good boy, which is a whole another topic that I'm not going to get into now. If you want me to make a separate episode on what it means to be a good child and how that impacts our decision-making later in life, leave me a comment down below. Now let's go back to putting yourself first and the guilt that we feel early on. When you're scolded by your parents or teachers for putting your needs first, you're faced with a very important decision. You can either rebel and be alienated from your family, which for a small child is equal to not being able to survive on their own, meaning they perceive it as painful as death, or you have the second choice. Comply with whatever your family wants you to do, which in this case is to do exactly what you've been told and disregard your primal need to put your best interests first. So once the dysfunctional family dynamics are set, The child begins to overthink the consequences of any action that involves them being seen as selfish for taking care of their needs. They start questioning themselves, second-guessing every move, and doubting their abilities to assess the situation objectively. They're constantly anxious and looking for answers outside of themselves because it's what they've been told to do. By telling their kids that putting themselves first means being selfish, parents unconsciously start a painful process for their children one of denying, suppressing, and disconnecting from their needs. Now that we have a clear idea of where the guilt for putting yourself first comes from, let's get into my first tip. Become more self-aware. Becoming more self-aware is all about being mindful of your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. Let's start with your thoughts. When you keep a distance from your thoughts, meaning you don't identify with every thought that goes through your head, you're being objective. There are many ways to become aware of your thoughts, but I will spend a few seconds talking about the power of meditation. Many people think that meditating is about having no thoughts. The truth is that meditation actually helps you detach yourself from your thoughts and have more space to see them for what they truly are, just thoughts. I've been meditating for more than 1,500 days now, and I've learned a lot. If you want to hear more about my experience and maybe even get inspired to implement meditation into your daily routine, listen to episode 55 next. I will link it below. Now let's go back to self-awareness. We've already discussed how to become more aware of your thoughts, but what about your feelings? Let's take a brief moment to talk about the mind-body connection. Your negative thoughts have a direct impact on the way you feel. For example, if you're thinking about a loved one who is very sick, That will inevitably lead to feeling sad, hopeless, anxious, worried, and maybe even angry. There's something interesting about our feelings. They're as much as impactful as our thoughts, if not even more. When you're feeling sad, for example, your mind may come up with reasons why you're feeling sad, trying to rationalize the feeling. 
Many times our feelings become even stronger when we attach a story to them. For example, if you start ruminating, which means obsessing over a situation that has already passed and reimagining it in your mind, this may lead to feeling the same emotions you felt the moment you experienced it. Our subconscious minds can't tell the difference between what's true and what we're visualizing in our heads. For example, if you're ruminating over a situation that made you angry, you will have the same thoughts and the same emotions you had when the situation happened. Now, where does our behavior come into play? When you're having negative thoughts and stories about why you shouldn't be putting yourself first, which leads to feelings of guilt and shame, this may lead to the same behavior, which is putting other people's needs before your own and not taking good care of yourself. One of the most effective tools I use with my clients is called the Automatic Thought Record Tool, which helps you become more self-aware by tracking your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. It's super simple to use, and you can download your free copy by clicking the link in the description box below or visiting bit.ly slash thought record tool. My second tip is learn how to say no to people. As a person who's used to putting other people's needs before your own, This would seem like an almost impossible task in the beginning. So I'm going to advise you to start small. For example, next time a friend asks you to go out, but you have other plans, just politely decline. No explanation needed. Then gradually start saying no to bigger things. For example, when a relative asks you for a favor, but you're not willing to help them, that's a great opportunity to set a healthy boundary and exercise your saying no muscle. Then you can start saying no to someone even closer or something that could potentially lead to a negative reaction from them. The thing is, it will feel uncomfortable and you may feel the familiar feeling of guilt and shame, but in time people will begin respecting you more and most importantly, you will start trusting and respecting yourself. Most of us know what we want in any situation, but don't want to admit it or need permission to do it. If you've been disconnected from your basic emotions and needs for a long time, it can be difficult to tune into your feelings and live life on your own terms. So if you need more help with setting healthy boundaries, watch my video on how to say no without feeling guilty at youtube.com slash coach Simona. I will also leave a link below. Tip number three is to meet your own emotional needs. Now that you've learned step number one, how to become more self-aware, and step number two, how to say no to people, The next step is to know how to meet your emotional needs. Putting yourself first doesn't only require you to spend some time taking better care of yourself, but also knowing how to utilize your time best. For example, you may want to put yourself first and be ready to take the first step towards healing, but not know how to do it. So the question I want you to start asking yourself every single day to meet your emotional needs is, what do I need right now? Once you realize what you need at any given moment throughout the day, you can choose a healthy way to meet this need. Here are some examples of basic needs. You may feel the need to eat, drink more water, sleep, relax, move your body, connect with a loved one, physical touch, etc. By learning how to meet your own emotional needs, you're not relying on other people to meet them. And that's an important part of putting yourself first, knowing how to take proper care of yourself. If you want to dive deeper into this topic, I suggest listening to episode 38 after this one. I will also link it below. Now I want to spend a few minutes talking about some possible objections that may go through your head. Since putting yourself first is not something that you're used to, you will have a lot of resistance at first. So let's talk about the possible objections that your mind may come up with to keep you stuck in what's familiar, which in this case is not taking good care of yourself. For the purposes of this exercise, let's call your mind chatter the inner critic, the voice that's always bullying you in your head and keeping you stuck with stories that no longer serve you. In this exercise, I will give you some examples on how to contradict your inner critic and take away its power. So here goes your inner critic's first objection, also known as mom guilt. But if I put myself first, doesn't that make me a bad mother? No, it doesn't. We all know the phrase, put your mask on first, in a life or death airplane situation. So how is that any different? If you don't take care of your needs as a human being, how can you show up as the best version of yourself for your child? That doesn't mean sleeping peacefully while your baby's crying, of course not. 
you still need to assess what's important to your child, especially in the early stages of its life. But that doesn't mean completely neglecting yourself. Be kind and compassionate with yourself. You're doing the best that you can. It's okay. The next thing your inner critic may say is, but if I put myself first, won't my partner feel neglected? No, they won't. When you put yourself first, you're showing your partner that you respect yourself. And if they're a healthy individual, they will feel enough on their own. And they will not need your constant attention or validation to feel significant. Besides, if you're in a codependent relationship, that will help you feel more self-sufficient and healthy, both as individuals and as a couple. Handling your inner critic is crucial when it comes to healing your trauma and putting yourself first without feeling guilty about it. That's one of the many things I teach in my signature online program for women. Enrollment opens in a few months, so make sure to sign up for the waitlist if you want to learn more at coachsimona.com slash waitlist. I'm so excited to guide you through the amazing transformation of building unshakable self-confidence and putting yourself first. So make sure to sign up for the waitlist to be the first to know at coachsimona.com slash waitlist. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this episode helpful, please like it. And subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on my weekly podcast episodes. I'm sending you all my love and I'll talk to you in the next one.